Hello students, this is Veeresh Yorvaj and Veeresh Academy YouTube channel. Today we are going to discuss a most important chapter for the upcoming examination that is advanced rulings. This chapter is usually not important for examination but for this attempt especially for the May 2023 this is very very important chapter. Why this is important? The entire chapter has amended not just one provision one section or two sections entire chapter has amended. If you are using the old material, please stop using it. Even don't use the October 2021 material also. So whatever institute has given the supplementary study material, uh, that only you should use for this chapter. Because in the supplementary study material, they have given the entire chapter. Because entire chapter has amended. Now what I did is, there are seven pages in the supplementary study material. I condensed the material into three and a half pages as a, as a summary. Okay, this contains everything whatever mentioned in the supplementary study material as well as the study material content and you need not refer any other material. This is more than enough. This material is more than enough. You can find this material in the description to this video. You can download and read. Okay, what is the major change? Earlier, we used to have authority for advanced rulings, right? There is an authority for advanced rulings. Now, the authority for advanced rulings was not existent now. From 1st September 2021 onwards, there is a new board called Board for Advanced Rulings came into the existence. So whatever provisions that are related to the authority for advanced rulings were not effective post 1st September 2021. Okay, we will see uh, how the board, board for Advanced Rulings Constitution and other provisions as well in this, in this short video. Okay, be with me for next 30 minutes and you will be master in this chapter for short. Now, let us understand what is advanced rulings first. When you read this chapter, what you understand? Advance rulings. That means ruling by advance. That means before even transaction is being executed, the ruling has been given. The, for what purpose the ruling has been given? The ruling has been given for the purpose of tax liability. Okay. For with this transaction, if the transaction was executed, then this is the tax liability and this is the rate the tax will be deducted. Tax is applicable as per the Indian tax law. That is what the advance ruling meaning is. So where this is helpful, where this is helpful, um, for example, there is a non-resident called Mr. X. So he wants to business in India with, with Mr. Y. Okay, obviously when this uh, transaction happens, there will be some income will be arisen in India that will be taxable in India in the hands of the non-resident. So he wants to understand in advance how much is his tax liability with this transaction. So there should be a mechanism with the income tax department, especially in these cases of with the non resident who doesn't have any understanding of, uh, of the in Indian tax laws. There should be a mechanism with the department to say that if you execute this transaction, this is your tax liability. That will be helpful for the non residents especially um, to understand the li their liability and they can manage their funds better. Not only for uh, non residents perhaps um, if I take an example of a resident, who is actually doing a, um, a transaction which involves around 100 to 200 crores of uh, transactions uh, the contract the transaction includes 100 to 200 crores of uh, business so if the transaction value is 100 and 200 crores even for a resident also he wants to understand the loss better because of the multiple complications and multiple provisions may be applicable he wants to understand what is his ultimate tax liability and how much uh, um, is his income from that particular transaction he wants to understand then he also uh, there should be a mechanism which you also should have approached the advanced ruling authority to get his uh, ru ruling that means his tax liability in advance so for resident who is actually doing a uh, businesses of 100 200 crores and for a non-resident who doesn't have understanding of the indian tax laws this ruling by advance that is advanced rulings is much needed okay now let us see the chapter that is the uh, importance of advanced ruling now we will go on to the each uh, mean, what is meaning of advanced ruling, who can apply to the advanced ruling authority and after receipt of application what advanced ruling authority will do and we will see all one by one. Now, uh, as I said earlier, uh, don't uh, put too much of stress on this chapter. This chapter will give you only two to maximum three marks. There's also maybe MCQs or maybe a question because of the amendment they may ask a question. So don't spend too much of time. You can use this material. You can rely on this material. Material also available at the description. Okay. Now, let us see what is the meaning of advance ruling just now we discussed ruling by advance that is that is an easy way to understand this this is provided in section 245 n 245 n the meaning of advance rulings was provided and if you see serial number um, applicant and the meaning of advance ruling in case of a non-resident 
in case of a non non resident what is the meaning of advance ruling for what purpose he will go to the advance ruling authority for the transaction that he is supposed to uh, execute uh, executing in india he wants to understand his tax liability simple for that reason okay let us see what the description is a transaction which has been undertaken or is proposed to be undertaken by him him meaning it is here, here it is non resident a transaction which has been undertaken or is proposed to be undertaken by the non resident in india obviously so that is the meaning of advance ruling for a non resident now let us see what is the meaning of advance ruling for a resident the tax liability of a non resident arising out of a transaction which has been undertaken or is proposed to be undertaken by a resident applicant with such non resident such determination shall include determination of question of law or fact so what is the meaning of it simply what is say what they are saying is in my earlier example when i said mr x who is a non resident for example he is doing a business with mr y who is a resident in india in this case either x can apply to the um, uh, this uh, board for advance rulings for the uh, ruling in, in, the, in the of the tax liability similarly mr y who is in india can also ap approach to the board for advance rulings to get the ruling of his particular transaction either one of them can apply so in the first point non resident is applying in the second point resident is applying for the same transaction so resident can apply or non resident can also apply now let us read again the resident point the tax liability of a non resident arising out of a transaction which has been undertaken or is proposed to be undertaken by a resident applicant with such non resident and such determination shall include whether it includes law or fact he can approach the board for advance ruling that is the point number 2 now let us see this is the interesting point a resident of class or category of person notified by the central government so sometimes as i said in the example that the transaction even if he is a resident in india the ta the the transaction value may be includes use like 100 crores 200 crores 300 crores for example reliance tata so they will involve in, the, in those kind of transactions which involves crores of rupees So, so they cannot just go by just like that. They have to understand what's the tax liability with this transaction. So that's where they also can approach to the uh, board for advance rulings to get the ruling of the tax, their tax liability. So here, the tax liability of a resident applicant arising out of a transaction which has been undertaken or is proposed to be undertaken by such applicant and such determination shall include determination of question of this is common question of law or fact specified in the application. So here. category of persons notified by the central government so central government has notified the the particular person who can approach for the board for advance rulings the central government notified a resident in relation to his tax liability arising out of one or more transactions valuing 100 crore or more in total the transactions value if it is 100 crores minimum 100 crore should be there then only he can approach this can be a probable mcq question Uh, you can note it down. Hundred crores or more, not less than that. Fine. Now I am going to the fourth point. Fourth point: resident of class or category of persons notified by the central government. Point number three and point number two looks the, looks like the same, but the but the meaning will be different. So this is for four, fourth point is related to what computation of total income. If the issue is related to computation of total income for a specified class or category of persons as notified by the central government, they can also approach the board for advance ruling, right? An issue related to the computation of total income, which is pending before any income tax authority or appellate tribunal, and such determination or decision shall include the determination of the question of law or fact in such computation of total income. So this is a unique uh, area where if there is a um, appeal is pending. before the income tax authority or the appellate tribunal and there is a issue related to the computation of total income there will be there will be some complication was there then also even if there is a uh, pending of the proceedings before the appellate authority income tax authority the resident applicant not not everybody the persons who are class who are notified by the central government can can also approach to the board for advance rulings so who are notified till now the only notified um, person under this is i think i mentioned here so for point number 4 point number 4 a public sector undertaking has been notified by the central government as an applicant only the public sector undertaking whose case is pending before the income tax authority or appellate appellate authority 
if there is a complication related to the computation of total income, they can approach to the board for advanced rulings to know about the tax liability. Okay. So usually we will uh, read in the later part of this chapter. Usually if there is any case pending before the income tax authority appellate authority, the applicant cannot go to the advanced ruling authority. So he cannot take the remedy on both the sets. One is from the income tax authority, one is from advanced ruling. Either one only he, he should choose. Right. But only the exception is point number four. In point number four, only public sector undertaking can go to the authority for advanced ruling, even though a case is pending before the appellate authority or income tax authority. Right. I hope uh, you clear on this. And I'm going to the point number five. Resident or non-resident here. Whether he is a resident, whether he is a non-resident, he can he can apply to the board for advance advance rulings, and there is no monetary limit was mentioned here. Okay, anybody can go, because the uh, meaning of advance ruling is very restricted one. Whether an arrangement which is proposed to be undertaken by any person being a resident or a non-resident is a impermissible avoidance agreement as referred in chapter 10. This is one of the general anti-avoidance agreements chapter 10. There is a separate chapter was there for CA final. You might have uh, uh, gone through that chapter. I'm not going into the details. So as mentioned, general anti-avoidance rules, right? Whether an arrangement which is proposed or proposed to be undertaken by a person being a resident or non-resident is an impermissible avoidance agreement referred to in chapter 10. 10A or not. So here resident or non-resident approach to the board to know about whether this particular transaction they are supposed to be executed is, is part of the general anti-avoidance rules or not which are provided in the chapter 10 so, to know about that more. Okay this is all about uh, meaning of advanced rulings there is section 245n. Now we to quickly uh, revise this. There are non-resident Resident, a resident as notified by the central government. Resident notified by the central government meaning uh, the transaction value includes 100 crores or more. That is, that is the huge, huge transactions. And and the fourth point again, resident a class of person notified by the central government. But here in this case, computation of computation related to computation of total income for which the uh, even though the case is the uh, uh, appeal is uh, pending before the ITAT or the income tax authority, only public sector undertaking was notified in, under point number four. And in the point number five, a resident or non-resident to can go to the board for advanced rulings to know about whether the particular transaction is part of chapter 10 that's related to general anti-avoidance right so this is all about this is all about the meaning of advanced rulings so here uh, mcq uh, questions can be about this 100 crore that is uh, one of the area and second is as a point number four who are notified here for computation problem who can who can go for advanced ruling that is a public sector undertaking psc can go for the um, advanced rulings as part of point number four. I hope you are clear on this. Now moving on to the next area that is board for advanced rulings. As I said uh, earlier there is a authority for advanced rulings was there. Now that was not in existence from 1st September 2021 onwards it is board for advanced ruling comes into the existence. And what are the changes from the authority of advanced rulings to board for advanced rulings? This cannot be a question in your examination. They don't ask the differences between the old and the new. But just for your understanding, uh, I'm explaining here, there are two major reasons for the abolition of that earlier authority for advanced ruling and bring into existence this board for advanced ruling. What are those? One is, um, one is related to, you know, um, the judicial members. One is related to judicial members. My writing is like that. Sorry for that. Related to judicial members. Earlier in the authority for advanced ruling to constitute a bench, there is a need for the judicial members. Those judicial members are the retired judges from the Supreme Court or a High Court. As you know, uh, the judges scarcity is there in India and the retired judges of High Court and Supreme Court is getting, uh, is becoming a little difficult. And because of this reason, there are a lot many cases before the authority of advanced rulings are keep pending. Then uh, the, the need for the, the motive behind implement of these provisions is impacted because of that. The effectiveness of the advanced rulings provisions was impacted due to because of the scarcity of the judicial members due to because that is one of the major reason bringing this board for advanced rulings in this board that it is to constitute a bench there is no need for the judicial member uh, the income tax authority who is an, at, the, at the rank of chief commissioner can be appointed as a member so there is no need for the judicial member and the, you know it when it can go smoothly this board functioning right that is one of the major change now the second one which is related to appeals 
earlier provisions under authority for advance ruling what used to happen is once the ruling was made it is binding on the applicant the applicant cannot go for the appeal the reason is in the bench itself the judicial member is already a retired judge of the high court, high court or supreme court he was the senior motion judge then then it is unfair to allow the applicant again go to, go for the appeal right that is one of becoming a one of the drawback on the applicant that he is stepping back to go to this advance ruling authority because once the ruling was made it is binding on the applicant he doesn't have any choice that is one of the drawback to overcome that what they did is under the board for advance ruling under these new rules they removed the judicial member we already discussed in the point number 1 as they removed the judicial member now the ruling authority is the chief commissioner of income tax rank of chief commissioner of income tax the applicant the ruling of the made by the board is not binding on the applicant applicant can still go for the appeal to the high court within 60 days of the ruling he can go for the appeal that is second major reason we can discuss more about these areas later part of this chapter also just for your understanding i have i, I gave this uh, you know brief introduction and what are the major reasons for the bringing up this board for advance rulings now we will move on to the uh, chapter further and uh, next next thing is constitution of this board constitution of board for advance ruling section 245 ob central government in exercise of power, exercise of such powers by notification number 96 2021 so if you are able to remember you can remember this uh, 96 as a notification number otherwise you can write as a relevant relevant notification also not a problem dated 1st september 2021 you remember this date date remembering date is easy 1st september 2021 constituted three boards for advance ruling not just one earlier there is only one now it is three so what i understand from this uh, notification is the government has a plan to uh, extend this board for advance ruling across all the cities in india that is what i can i can see here because first two boards there are three boards they mention board for advance ruling 1 2 and 3 first one and two will have their headquarters in delhi and the third one headquarters is in mumbai right two in delhi one in mumbai maybe they may extend to the other major uh, cities of india also in future let us see every such board for advance ruling shall consist of two members there are two members each being an officer of not below the rank of the chief commissioner as may be nominated by the board there should be two members and rank not below the rank of chief chief commissioner there is no requirement of judicial member that is important point here okay next if a, there is a note here if a resident applicant made an application to the board under these provisions then no income tax authority tribunal or any such authority shall take decision in this in relation to the issues so this is we have discussed earlier also that if any resident a resident applicant has has the, there are there are only uh, two two choices for him either he can go for the income tax authority or he can go for the uh, this um, board for advance ruling he cannot choose the both he cannot go for the for the same issue before the board for the same issue he cannot come to the income tax authorities also other income tax authorities also that is what they have mentioned here then i am moving on to the next topic that is application for advance ruling section 245 q application for advance ruling applicant applicant can make who is an applicant we have discussed in detail who is an applicant that the table was there that is the uh, applicant just a minute this is the table applicants this is very important that's why i'm repeating this is the uh, applicants name non resident 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 of category mentioned by the central government resident or non resident related to the general anti avoidance rules related so all these things they they are these are the applicants application applicant can make an application specified in prescribed form and prescribed manner they have not yet notified that application and all that will come in detail in the uh, so in some time application should be made in the quad duplicate that means four copies four copies of application should be made now it comes to the fees as per section 245 q subsection 2 the application has to be accompanied by a fee of rupees 10000 as we prescribed whichever is higher so either it's a prescribed fee Or the rupees ten thousand, whichever is higher. That that means the minimum fees is to ten thousand. Under Rule forty four E, they have mentioned the prescribed fees. What is the fees for category of uh, uh, transactions? They have categorized the you know entire uh, transactions into a am amount involved, like hundred crores, hundred to three hundred crores, exceeds three hundred crores, etc. So here you can see in the table category of applicant. Uh, point number one, two, and three mentioned in the meaning of the advance ruling table. That means what are those one, two, and three? Resident, non-resident, and the resident notified by the central government. 
क्लास आर क्लासेस ऑफ पर्सन नोटिफाइड बाय द सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट दोस थ्री पॉइंट नंबर वन टू एंड थ्री इफ दो आर द अपलिकेंट्स देन इफ द कैटेगरी ऑफ केस इज अमाउंट ऑफ वन आर मोर ट्रांसक्शन एंटेड इन टू आर प्रपोज टू बी अंडरटेकन इन रेस्पेक्ट ऑफ विच रूलिंग साउट सो फॉर वॉट पर्पज दे आर गोइंग फॉर ए ट्रांसक्शन एंड द ट्रांसक्शन वैल्यू डज इन टी इज हंड्रेड क्रोड्स देन वॉट इज द फी फीस इज टू लैक्स If the transaction value doesn't exceed 100 crores, the fees is 2 lakhs. If it is between 100 to 300 crores, the application fees is 5 lakhs. And if it is exceeds 300 crores, then application fees is 10 lakhs. Then you need to buy out this table. If it is doesn't exceed 100 crores, then it is 2 lakhs. If it is 100 to 300 crores, the application fees 5 lakhs. If it is exceeds 300 crores, the application fees 10 lakhs. And in any other cases, any other any other applicant, any other cases, the, it is ten thousand rupees standard fees. And if you see point number one, two, and three already covered in the in the first point itself, any other applicant that means point number four and five. Like here, first point number one, two, one, two, and three already covered, and point number they are any other applicant, they, their meaning is point number four and point number five. These are the only two applicant that was left, right? For these people, resident class or class of person related to the computation of total income, related to general anti-avoidance avoidance rule, resident or non-resident, for for them the fees is ten thousand rupees only, standard fees. Okay, I hope you are clear. And uh, there is a option of withdrawal also available for the applicant. At by what time? Within thirty days of making the application, from the date of the application, he can withdraw the um, you know application. Next point is a transitional provision, not very important. So what it just says is any any cases which are pending before authority of advance ruling before first September two thousand one that will automatically get transferred to the board for advance ruling. That is what this provision says. That next there is a note here. The note is that applicant can withdraw his application within thirty days, right? However, this doesn't preclude the board from permitting the withdrawal if the circumstances justify. So the meaning of this is applicant should withdraw his application. He can withdraw his application within thirty days if he if he wants to do so. Um, but for example, if the thirty days has crossed, there is a government policy came up or a budget came up. In that budget or in the government policy, there are new restrictions or the kind of business non-resident is proposed to do in India was not in existence now that was removed. There are a lot of uh, you know restrictions were put by the government. Then the question that he asked in the in the in his application is redundant now is of no relevance in the current scenario. Then what board will do is instead of investing time on the time on that application, what they will do they they will say is they will withdraw the application on behalf of the applicant itself. But that is what this point says. However, this doesn't doesn't applicant can withdraw his application within thirty days. However, this doesn't preclude the board from permitting the withdrawal if the circumstances justify. Circumstances what are those government policy. Budget or any external situations, right? That is what this point says. Moving on, next thing is procedure on receipt of application section two forty five or mentioning section is not very important. Uh, you can just mention as a as per the relevant provisions. But if you are able to remember, it is good. You can remember section two forty five or procedure on receipt of application. You made an application, and a uh, boat boat is already gone through that application. And they have accepted the application. Assume that they accepted the application. What they will do? The next step. What they will do is they will. Uh, this they you have applied in four copies, right? One of the copy they will give it to the uh, PCAT, that is Principal Commissioner of Income Tax, or the commis relevant Commissioner of Income Tax. They will forward this your application to the to the Income Tax Authority, PCAT. What this Principal Commissioner of Income Tax will do is they will go through the application. Whatever relevant records are there with the Income Tax Department, they will forward to the Board for Advance Rulings, and Board for Advance Rulings will go through that to provide their ruling. Okay, if they accept the application, what if if they reject the application? Board can reject the application also. If they reject the application, they need to record the reasons reasons for the rejection of such application. Okay, and there is there should be an opportunity of being heard. Obviously, before rejection of the application, the board has to give an opportunity of being heard to the applicant that this is the reason why why we are you know uh, rejecting your application. In case of any issues are there, please let us know. Kind of thing, opportunity of being heard, right? Okay, on receipt of application, board will share copy of application to the principal commissioner or respective commissioner. Okay, on receipt of such application, PCAT or CAT will share the relevant records with the board. Board will send this record back to the PCAT or CAT as soon as possible. Well. That means once the ruling is over, 
then they will uh, give it back these records to the uh, respective PCIT. Vote post examination of application either can allow or reject the application. However, no application shall not be rejected. No application shall not be rejected without giving an opportunity of being heard that we just discussed. Further, both shall record the reason for reason for rejection of application. If the, in case of any rejection, they should record the reason for rejection and as well as they should give the opportunity of being heard. Okay. However, application shall not be allowed. This is important topic here in this chapter. Application shall not be allowed where the question is related to the following matters. The application uh, usually the advanced ruling authority can, can accept the application, can reject the application. But in these particular cases, the uh, the you know board has has to mandatorily mandatorily reject the application straight away. What are those cases? The point number A. If the case is pending before the income tax authority, triple R and A court, as we already discussed earlier, that he can take only he has only two choices. One, either he go for the board. Two, he can um, he can settle the issue with the income tax authority. He cannot take the two stats. He cannot waste the time of the two two authorities, right? So, okay, as usual, again, uh, this there is an exception to this rule as well. Exception, what is the exception? They said, however, if applicant is a resident falling under the specified category notified by the central government, specified category notified by the central government comes in the applicant's definition in, in, in two points, point number three and point number four in the about even. Okay, if, if the, if the, you know, the case is related to point number three and point number four is the applicant, then this rule doesn't apply. They can apply to the uh, this board even though the case is pending before the income tax authority. That is what this exception says. But here I have a question here. But there is no a clarity also in the institute's uh, supplementary study material also. What the exception says is if the applicant is a resident falling under the specified category notified by the central government. If you see in the applicant's definition, there are two places where the central government has notified the persons as applicants. Right, point number three and point number four. Allowing the giving the exception to point number four, I'm okay because the meaning of advanced ruling itself says that if it is related to computation of total income and is pending before any income tax authority or appellate tribunal, so they have to give this exception to that rule. I'm fine. But they mentioned even point number three also. Point number three also was covered in that exception because this is also a category of person notified by the central government. Point number three also. But why point number three has they have included? Uh, there is no clarity there, but by by literal interpretation of what the exception they have given, it covers the point number three and point number four in the applicant's definition. Okay, that is what this exception says. That is what the first uh, first point it says. Okay, just open this your uh, institute study material also. Sorry, not study material, supplementary supplementary material also for the direct taxes. Recently they issued this, and you can see the same point here also. Pending with income tax authorities or tribunal or court, application should not be allowed. Here they have given an exception. However, a resident falling within class or category of persons as notified by the central government can seek for advanced ruling even if the question raised is pending before the income tax authority or IDAT. So the exception they have given in a very generic nature. That means by plain reading of this exception, it covers point number three and point number four, which was there in this, uh, you know, in the material. Let me just go back. Yeah. So if you see point number three and point number four, so both contains the person noted by central government, both will be covered. That is the plain understanding of this exception. Now moving on to the second point, if the question is related to, so what we are discussing, we are discussing those applications which were straight away will be, can be rejected with a port. The point number one, if it is the case is pending before the IDAT or any, any other income tax authority. The point number two is if the question is related to the FMB, fair market value of any property. So applicant cannot just come to the board and ask for the, okay, this is my property, do a valuation. No, they are not sitting for doing that. So fair market value related questions, you cannot ask to the board. That is what the strike prohibition point number B. And the point number C, transaction related to the question specified in the application is mainly related to the avoidance of income tax. So non-resident's only intention is to, he wants to tax refunds. That is what, that's the only reason He's, he's come with that mollified intention only. He's coming to the board to uh, get the ruling. In those cases also, if the, if the you know, question is related to the avoidance, only avoidance of income tax, then also that can be rejected by the board. 
here also they have given an exception uh, for some time you need to remember these exceptions and uh, in 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 the very near future there will be more clarity will come in these kind of exceptions okay however if applicant is a resident or non resident falling under 345 point what is point number 345 three is resident or class of person notified by central government related to the you know particular transaction point number 4 resident or class of person notified by the central government related to the computation of income point number 5 resident or non resident uh, related to the general anti avoidance gaar rules okay chapter 10 those those are those are the point number 3 4 and 5 if the application is related to the point number 3 4 and 5 is even if it is avoidance of income tax related thing also board can still accept the application that is what the exception says okay let's do a quick revision uh, in which of the cases application will be rejected by the board mandatory rejection the point number 1 if it is pending before the income tax authority or the IT, or the itat exception is is what is the exception point number 3 and point number 4 that is um, resident resident applicant uh, falling within the class or category of persons that means transaction value is 100 crores or above and uh, point number 4 resident or category class of person notified by the central government related to the computation of total income even if it is pending before the itat or income tax income tax authority that is the point number 3 and 4 and if the in, in the where uh, what is the next point in the rejection list point number b that is related to fair market value of any property applicant cannot go for the value to the fair market value before the um, before the board and point number c point number c is related to the question related to the uh, avoidance of income tax if the intention is only to avoidance of avoidance of income tax then then he cannot apply to the apply to the board for the board will reject the application the exception is point number 3 4 and 5 in the applicant uh, definition okay i hope you are clear if the application is allowed i'm going to the next uh, next para if the application is allowed board shall pronounce its ruling based on the information and other details provided applicant can request the board for an opportunity of being heard before its ruling either personally or through an authorized representative so he can he can appoint his uh, uh, his authorized representative or he can appear before him himself before the advance advance rulings advance rulings are the authority he can appear before personally also so Uh, he will get that uh, right opportunity of being heard before the authority and time limit the board shall pronounce its order within 6 months of the date of receipt of the application date of the receipt of the application they have to give the give their order within 6 months this is also important from mc mcq perspective next topic is faceless scheme so if you you might have heard this word many times uh, during the covid time and uh, to break the chain central government has introduced this scheme this scheme is going successfully now for the regular assessment and they want to introduce the same scheme even for the advance rulings as well because they have seen it has its more advantages more advantages so what are those advantages for example the first thing earlier uh, what ssc and department is uh, is is getting the criticism is it lacks the transparency and what what used to happen uh, if anybody has a good rapport with the commissioner or the assessing officer there will be some bias bias was there that is what the public uh, perception about the department so because of this introduction of this faceless scheme so what we, what is happening now there is no interface there is no interaction between the ssc or the authorized representative or the commissioner so this increases the transparency and reduces the bias or the criticism to great extent so that is one of the great advantage of this faceless account scheme okay let's read this the central government is empowered to make a scheme by notification of the official gazette for the purpose of giving advance ruling so as to import the efficiency transparency and accountability right first first what is the advantage of this eliminating the interface between the board for advance ruling and the applicant in the course of proceeding to the extent technologically possible so they will uh, create the technological infrastructure for even for the advance rulings also so that ssc or the authorized representative and the pcit can easily interact Uh, between each other to uh, you know get for the all the he- all the hearings of the case right and for the second one point number 2 optimizing utilization of resources through economies of scale and functional specialization so what 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 does it means utilization of resources it might happen that there are lo- lot many chief commissioners will be there across the country and in one place there are lot of cases are are coming and for the other places there are so for example there are three boards it had used right now right board advance ruling 1 2 and 3 as per this notification so in one in board advance ruling bench 1 there are less cases and in bench 2 and 2 and 3 there are lot of cases so this bench 1 whoever that principal commissioner are there they can utilize this some time to 2 and 3 also 
so they have that plan that is the optimum utilization of the resources which are available that is the another advantage of this faceless account scheme and what is the third one and third one is introducing a system of dynamic juris jurisdiction as it is a online it is not like this commissioner belongs to the particular circle at a particular range uh, uh, like that so anybody any any commissioner who is available available at that point in time they can they can attend this th that creates a dynamic jurisdiction because everything is online right so the, those are the three advantages what are those eliminating the interface and the second thing utilization of resources and dynamic jurisdiction these are the three advantages of faceless account scheme right so uh, there is a note here central government can issue can make changes anything related to the faceless account scheme on or before 31st march 2023 because why they put this date just to have a timeline but the central government also make this scheme effective before march before 31st march 2023 central government can issue any no, any notification surplus to say that the particular provision in the income tax is not applicable uh, to make this account faceless account scheme effective but till what time they can do till 31st march only post that they, can, they cannot issue any circulars or notifications like that okay now moving on to the powers of the board for advanced rulings section 245u next topic is powers of the board for the advanced ruling section 245u obviously the the board board should have some powers to execute their functions well right so what are those powers as like you can see it's the same kind of uh, uh, points in other other laws also wherever this especially in the corporate law and income tax also the same points were repeated here there is nothing new the board shall have the power of the civil court while during the proceedings and it has all the powers which are mentioned in the code of criminal proceedings 1973 but here there is one exception that is chapter 26 whatever offenses that are contained in chapter 26 related to uh, offenses related to administration of justice except for those things remaining whatever powers that are mentioned in the ccp code 1973 are available with the advanced rulings board as well so board for advanced ruling shall have the powers of the civil court except for chapter 26 chapter 26 related to what offenses related to administration of justice so we just mentioned chapter 26 that is more than enough of a ccp code of criminal procedure 1973 in respect of so what are the powers of powers of this board for advanced rulings as contained in ccp 1973 same points this is repeated points discovery and inspection of documents and uh, enforcing the attendance of any person and issuing commissions issuing commissions and compelling the production of books of accounts and other documents so during the proceeding they need attendance of any person to ask some ask some queries or some questions or evidence of any documents or discovery and inspection of any document any records for the inspection so board will ask these inf these this information during the proceedings and it is the binding on the either the department and the applicant to produce those records before the um, this board right that is what it says this is the these are the common points you can actually mention if you have already studied these points same points were repeated here that is what it what it powers of board for advanced ruling section 245 u now moving on to the appellate provisions what are the appellate provisions earlier as i said that there is a in the authority of adv advanced rulings that era there is no chance for the uh, this sse to go for an appeal but here in this uh, post for september 2021 when this board for advanced ruling comes into the existence there is a chance for the sse to go for the appeal so the order of the board is not binding on the applicant as well as the assessing officer also assessing officer also can go for the appeal but how to go for the appeal for the assessing officer is still to be notified by the central government you can see in the note assessing officer agreed by the board's order can also apply to the high court scheme notified by the central government uh, central government will come with uh, a scheme uh, based on the availability of resources and thinking about all those things the practicability of the things they will come up with some scheme now it was not clear about the um, appeal can be made by the assessing officer but for the applicant it is already clear he can go for the appeal right appeal to high court against what order issued by the board right that is uh, what are the uh, the section related section is section 245 w appeal to the high court within 60 days from the communication of the bar order bar order means it is a board for advanced rulings okay that is i just put a short word here hc can condone the delay if uh, if it is prevented by sufficient cause to maximum allowed condonation of delay how much limit time limit of 30 days so original time limit is available for the applicant to go to the high court is 60 days and additional time limit for the condonation of delay which high court is having the power is 30 days total becomes 90 days right 
60 days for the timeline and 30 days if there is a sufficient cause then this is 30 days extension is possible total 90 days okay this note is also over and now uh, we are almost done with this chapter there are uh, one two important points are there that we are going to discuss now so first point is this is also common across all the uh, laws whatever that you study in the corporate law and in the income tax merely existence of any vacancy or a defect doesn't automatically invalidate the proceedings of the board right? there is some um, vacancy in the on the board you cannot question question that just because of there is a vacancy on the board board's uh, uh, members you cannot say that order is invalid that is what this point says second point where the board for advance ruling finds on a representation made to it PCAT or CAT or otherwise the advance ruling pronounced has been obtained by the applicant by fraud or misrepresentation of facts. So if his intention is to fraud misrepresentation of facts, he just want to evade the income tax by applying to the this advance rulings board. And the, if, the, if they came to know with the facts, that board came to know with these facts and they can say that the whatever order that they have issued is void. <clears throat> that is not effective so all the provisions of income tax whatever was there is automatically getting getting applied applied on those uh, um, particular transaction as if that there is no advance ruling was made clear so this is a voidable provision and this is the existence of vacancy point number point number one this is what the entirely about uh, advanced rulings. I hope you enjoyed this lecture. If you have any feedback about my lecture, please share it in the comment box. Uh, please share this video that whoever needs this video and sharing the knowledge is the best thing that is possible, right? You are not losing anything. Please share this video and like and subscribe this channel. And there is a MCQs also. There are um, three to four MCQs that I uh, designed especially for this, uh, you know, based on these amendments. So you can uh, solve this on your own. This, those are very easy. This is all. Okay. Thank you. Thanks for uh, listening and thanks for following me. Thanks for supporting me. All the best. Bye.